Hey everybody, welcome to the Hamakua Homestead. My name is Tiffany and on this channel I'm taking you along for all of the adventures here on the ranch. Just got home from work and I decided to, it's an early day, um, I just decided to stop at the grocery store. I figured I might find some green beans or some tomatoes that were on sale at good price because they're in season so heavily on the mainland. But what I ended up finding was corn, four bags of corn. So I'm gonna go ahead and can it up. I have not canned just corn by itself before and I think it would be a really nice addition to the pantry shelf. We can just toss it into anything. So I am going to go ahead and start shucking these. But the thing is, it is Monday and it's almost two o'clock my time, which means it's time for Fermented Homesteads Live. So I'm gonna go ahead and shuck these while I watch that. And then I'll bring you guys back and show you the process. Okay, so we have our corn shucked. We gotta clean it up a little bit, there's still more strings. So we have 36 ears of corn and we're gonna go ahead Get the strings cleaned up and cut the corn off the cob. Well, I left Chattanooga, boy, had a dollar and a dime. Get it out to Nashville on the hard rock line. I'm working on that old steamboat and learn to ride the steam. When my feet had touched dry land, how happy I did feel. So I am not going to lie, 36 ears of corn is a lot of corn, is a lot. It took a while, <laughs> but that's okay. I ended up with two big bowls of corn. And as I was in the process, I remembered seeing recipes on other YouTube channels about corn cob jelly. I have never made a jelly ever in my life. I've made a few jams, but that's it. So. I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to try it out. So maybe tomorrow or the next day, something, we will make corn crop jelly. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and get our corn put into our pint jars so that we can get this going. Been saving every penny for to make up through the fall. Working for that dollar. But it never adds up at all. We are going for one inch headspace on these jars. And you'll notice I am not packing these down. I'm just very lightly shaking them so that I can tell what the headspace is at. Um, according to the Ball Book of Complete Canning, whatever the name of that book is, they said don't pack it down. We are going to be filling these with water before we put them in the canner. Coming around the river bank where the old train was so sane. The very next thing you hear from me, I've been tied to a ball and chain. Well, come this time tomorrow, reckon I don't know where I'll be. But if it wasn't for that old sheriff, I'd be back. Okay, so we finally got finished filling up our jars. We ended up with 10 wide mouth and 14 regular mouth. And that is too much for even my medium sized um, Presto. So I'm um, all American. So I busted out the Presto as well. So we're going to have the two canners going at the same time. The next step, we're gonna go ahead and fill them up with water to the one inch headspace. Back in Tennessee, playing cards and crap games, not looking for a score. And if I ever get back home again, I'll never own no Good 
time, boys, listen to my song. May not know better, but I know you know right from wrong. Buy yourself a postcard so you can see the lights of town. Find yourself a country girl, keep quiet and sit on sure about is because when I was at the grocery store and I saw that the corn was on sale, I googled it and I was like, how many ears of corn do I need to fill a pint jar for pressure canning? And because the Google pants told me I needed four ears per pint. Obviously that math does not hold up. So I ended up with way more pints than I was anticipating, but you know what? It's okay because corn was on sale, it's in season, and we can put it up on the shelf, we can add it to all kinds of things later. So I'm not disappointed about it, but we are going to go ahead and just let our canners process and I will show you what they look like when they come out of the canners. It has been a long afternoon, it is into the dark now, so I just want to bring you guys along and show you the difference between the Presto and the All-American. They are not of equal size, obviously. We fit one stack of pint cards in the Presto, and I can stack two inside of the All-American. The Presto is very quick to come up to heat, come up to pressure, and it's also very quick to come down. It is out, I, it's done. I can take this out right now. This one still has another nine minutes left, so, a little bit more information. When I turned this one off of pressure and let it start coming down naturally, is the same exact time that I turned on my timer for this one. So if you're ever wondering if you should get a Presto or an All American, they both have their pros and their cons. Um, I personally like both of them for different reasons. So. Let's go ahead and take our jars of corn out of our little presto and see how they turn out. Make sure you always face it away from you because you don't want the steam to come up into your face. Our first eight pint jars, we'll wait for the other one and I'll show you how those ones turn out too. These ones look great. But our second pressure canner is finally ready. Let's open it up. Versatile and so usable in so many different ways. Thank you for joining me today here on the Hamakua Homestead. I will see you again soon. And just like that, it's pretty freaking cool. It's pretty freaking cool. We have, I'm super stoked, and I, um, I feel like it will be used in amazing ways 